item I have on the number six in the agenda is the public comment period. Fifteen minutes to allow the public to bring we just a little bit where y'all could uh, maybe hear better. Brought the microphone up in the front where you can address the commissioners and address the, the uh, body. So uh, I'll leave it now to the, the public to address the commission on any issues and we allow this time for fifteen minutes. I guess could y'all hear me? Thank you. Looks like we're going to say 15 minutes. Next item on the uh, under number seven is approved with notaries. Um, I have the following names Carolyn Nose, Cody Bailey, Connie Higgins, Dana Smith, Michelle Asbury, and Krista Trail. Any questions? I'd like a motion, sir. Second. Gets to a voice vote. All opposed, or say, to the vote, uh, voice vote. Get a vote. All in favor, say. Aye. Aye. Anybody opposed? Okay. All right. Next item under number eight is quarterly reports. Okay. The first one there I have is the highway department. Any questions concerning the highway department's quarterly report? I don't know if Wayne's here. No, no, not. We don't, I mean, from a funding standpoint, the highway department is essentially self funded. And uh, um, if you'd like more, I can relay that back to the department. Uh, as you can see here, the uh, department total uh, budget status at 0.8%. Um, uh, I would like to see in the future, um, I would like to see more of a line item or, or kind of more, more numbers, I guess. I, there's nothing here. Um, and I would like to see um, vehicle inventory. I would like to know how many miles of road have been paved. Thank you. 
Um, the next item I have on the quarterly report is the solid waste um, county general and the solid waste the report that you put over there. I do have a little bit more detail on that. Property tax levy, budget estimates on line four one hundred ten. You can see the the thing that I focus on is where we're at concerning the um, percent of the budget. If you look at the year to date line, uh, we do have some statistical anomalies, especially under the pickup taxes there. There's some things that uh, when you go through here, uh, the courtroom security fee at 146%, and that's over. I don't know if you're following on the sheet here. Um, and in theory, what, what you should be seeing is a percent of the budget. Uh, this is almost at the half year mark. Um, and, uh, you see current property tax at 45.4%. So from a manager standpoint, besides a few statistical uh, problems with it, uh, the, the county general budget is it's, it's tracking from a revenue standpoint. Yeah, go ahead. I would just call your attention to the various revenues uh, related to identified as fines. Business. Which one? Which line? Okay, about? business tax is forty-two seventy on the front page of the back. Yes, sir. yes, sir. Forty-two seventy business tax is going to take ten percent, point six, and maybe that's right in order. Maybe they don't come in until February, March, whatever. I just don't know, but that would jump out at you. We expect to be thirty-two five, and we said that six thousand and eight. Again, might be an explanation that makes that very correct in where we're at here today. But it, it just, if you go down to your fines, 42110, 42310, uh, 42380, 42610, 43360, 43393, uh, our revenue projections are significantly less than all of those accounts. And that's a concern because that's revenue departments that uh, the revenue is not coming up to, to par. I don't have an explanation, don't understand it, but because I think you asked me and we're putting to us, and we would say activity in the law enforcement is up. And uh, prosecutions or whatever have you want to uh, look at those numbers, I don't think anybody believes they're less. So with our revenues in the finite arenas being significantly out of whack, they are. On the 10, on the 38.7, 23.2, 22.4, uh, the uh, fines under 42, 16 is the only one that's even close. 32.4, 32.9. And the total of the general revenue funds versus expenses may be in the line. Then the department's uh, revenue produced departments is, is significantly less. And, and in my memory search, <coughs> which I know it does the last these few years, so we've been last this for years well. So it's a trend that uh, <coughs> uh, need, uh, well, I, I would just say the budget committee would probably be asking the department heads to uh, provide an explanation concerning that. <coughs> uh, so anyway, just, just put it on the table that if our revenues are going south, uh, in every department, that's a concern of the financial status of this term. Yep, and that's why we have the Barrett Group hired to look at our revenue lines and your item right, mean, from an overall standpoint. Uh, the, when you go through this, the only, if there is a lot of that, um, the, the, the solid waste, that's, that's changing. Um, it's gotten better. The back bottom line there is the expenses have gone down. But, yeah, this is a budget committee. But again, we, this is something that we started about a year and so ago. We started bringing these four reports in to look at. And we can't solve it here today, and I can't answer the questions on the different revenue lines. I know there are some numbers that stick out at you. I can 
see it too. In the world, it will be close to 50%, and we've got some things that are just not there. And, uh, yeah. Uh, Ronnie's answer to your business tax question on the 40 to Yes, business tax is not due in the county and state until April 15. Good. So that, that makes sense. It can call the line to the way. And also, that, track, that, that line of is tracked good. We would just be just off the page. It can only be a state. That provides exactly the interest we need. And on your fine, if you have someone that wants to do the time, do 100% of their time, they don't pay the fine. And, and, and I understand that. But by having said that, then we're overestimating in our revenue line of budget expected business. We need to be slashing that. Our, our budget's not being legit for us to base decisions on expenditures uh, and revenue support for the department. So, again, it's a trend that's going the wrong way. I think it's, this is the third fiscal year, but I know for sure Last year was significantly lesser than what was projected back then. And now, as we're into it, we're falling way short again. Let's see, that's why we always we always look at hard figures to get a more accurate look at what's going on. <coughs> on solid waste, uh, Grant, I'll just throw this one. First of all, uh, two things. Uh, I understand the figures, but I can't, I can't, I can't. Jeff, you push, you're not asking to say one word, you've not paid me off, you've done nothing. Okay? <laughs> but I, I just went into the solid waste budget and looked at the numbers that was projected this year. And of course, there's been significant change up on the hill all the way around, and, and Brent Bush and, 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 and is a driver of that with, with Jim being his second in command, I guess we would say. But if you look at your labor costs over time, Training, the amount we contribute to our Social Security, retirement, employee, dependent care, medical insurance, all that was in the budget. Supplies, etc. We saw our budget is 56,774. And of course we're halfway through, so it's 28,387 in essence has been put into the hoppers that was not incurred as a result of Brent and Jim's efforts and what Jim was doing mm -hmm. from a volunteer standpoint. Uh, I, I don't even know how we measure that to put in the bank store. <coughs> because that is going beyond the call anyway in the world. When someone sets up there on their own time, day in and day out, week in, week out, month in and month, that he's doing it for this county. So again, we, we need to be appreciative of that. We've all got our own whatever that we want to point to or call out or whatever. But and good things are occurring and, 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 and being supported directly by your elected, elected official trying to help this county. Uh, Jim Bush needs accolades unbelievable of the thousands of dollars he's put in the conference that's helping this county now for a reason. So I say that and this isn't on the agenda and I don't even know where it fits. But I gotta say this too, I saw the paper for uh, Commissioner Ford Davenport assisted in getting uh, the uh, monies for the ball field clubhouse. And, and again, that's going to be up call. That's stepping up. That's just doing things on your own, trying to help this county and the citizens and kids and students of this county to uh, achieve things that they need that we're so financially strapped that we're going to make all the choices financially. But the court appreciate that. Thank you for watching. Well, let's not lose sight of what else is going on, too. If it wasn't for Sheriff Darrell Young, yes, all this would be possible. And I, I, I need to apologize to Daryl. Absolutely. We all know that work. Because Daryl Darryl has, has really helped us significantly. You don't know Jim's thing. The, the inmates provide the labor. Jim's a guy running the show that was still supervised with them. But we're saving all the labor from the employees in the home because of the inmates and services. Any other discussion on the quarterly report? And I'll just will say the Solid Waste Committee will meet again next month, and uh, they, they've got some work to do, and we've got some more information um, out concerning the, the future of the Solid Waste Facility concerning uh, the St. John Engineering. So um, any other questions, any other discussion concerning the quarterly reports has been uh, 
provided, but he wanted some electrical to go back. Again, this was something that we started doing about four years ago. I've got it kind of ratcheted down a little bit. Maybe it was three years ago. On the purpose of the quarterly reports, why do you get the quarterly reports, and maybe we need to get this more to a budget committee issue and not so much here where y'all can have some more final information. Just a suggestion. Any other discussion? Next item is uh, the uh, number eight, approve the resolution. I think it's uh, Mr. Curtis. It's in the room. Uh, Thank you. Thank
uh, Fayette County uh, whose growth happened after 2000. Do you meet that criteria simply because of the 1990 to 2000 growth? And in addition to the explanation for the ability to implement the legislation, the This is not only for new construction, it's for capital improvements as well. And while you may not be experiencing new construction needs, with with, for some are with population growth immediately, you do have that improvement that is needed, uh, or maintenance that is needed on the school system. So that applies as well for this. You can qualify under this, one, because of your census numbers for that 10 year time frame, from one census to the next, and with the need for the improvements that you have on the school system. They're going to be on And we, if I'm fortunate enough for you to pass this day, we need to be passed one more time at your next regular meeting. And I know there was a question uh, when we were talking about how this would be applied and implemented when we talked about the mobile homes. You specifically asked that question. Since they don't do certificates of occupancy, but uh, with the new mobile homes coming in, uh, the electric companies would not allow hookup until that receipt was given. So there is a process for how that would be applicable since they don't have to take the certificate And there's a way to do that other county as well. And I'll say Discussion. Question, so. Discussion. And this does have to go to the schools. The I know as it's written as a, in this resolution it does, but is <coughs> the county trustee is hereby directed to deposit such revenue in the education debt service and or education capital expenditure side. So it can be in your general fund under those categories. Those are the two categories you have to know. And if we pass that today, we get half of this first year's plan.
process, the fee has one year to be paid, uh, or an extension can be, or at the time the house is completed, if it's less than one year, the certificate of occupancy comes in. So it's not a upfront due immediately type of process. Right. Uh, technically, it's the builder, but we again, we'll do how that passes on to the homeowner over the process. A dollar is the top limit. I'm shooting myself my foot in the foot by saying that. A dollar is the top limit right now. Uh, you can come in at a lower amount first. But that said, you can only increase this every four years. You'll have to increase it every four years. But four years is the minimum of which you can come back and review the dollar amount for this. Any other discussion? Yeah. This, this $1,800 they're talking about up front paid by the film, passed on to the buyer. Over the life of the loan, you can figure about ten thousand dollars what that's going to cost. Not just take from thirty years. That's what it costs. And they're predicting this county in the next ten years is only grow at one point eight percent. The last few years, the last census it grew just a hair about two percent. And since 2010, we've grown about 400. I think Rutherford County did this to curb growth, and, and I don't think we're going to curb anything. I, I, don't, care what, I, don't, I don't care what Rutherford County did. I don't represent Rutherford County. I represent the people here in Cannon County. Rutherford County go pound sand. So this is what I'm looking at. <coughs> And this is what I'm thinking. You see all that red right there for those roofs? And from what I understand, that right there ain't worth nothing because all the information wasn't actually given to the lady that prepared the report. She didn't know nothing about the $10 with it actually in the and the $40 with it actually. And I'm understanding they throw that out the window. They didn't quite throw it out the window. That's a little bit of as well. The exemptions would be for religious entities. There's a category that some of those falling under that the exemption would be on those. Good question. I noticed there's a lot of folks <coughs> have started using these uh, buildings like mean farms and stuff and making a home from that. Would this count for that? It's residential, yes, it would count for that. And the minimalist thing that are going on, yes, that applies well. And this is a one-time fee. Correct. And it's on new construction. It is not on any build-out, remodel. Uh, there are exemptions for it. If a home is destroyed by natural fire or something comes in, whole thing's destroyed and it's rebuilt, the development tax would not apply to that. This is simply new construction. My own reason why I I think we missed the proverbial window to do this, but we're still trying to catch up. 
that have already had some sort, some form of either development tax or impact tax in place when this passed in 06. Williamson, I won't say that. Uh, Montgomery, Hicklin, Cheatham, Wilson, Robertson, uh, Macon, Murray, Sumner, Marshall, Dixon. It was a good mix of them. Did some of these have Marshall, not growing a bunch at all. It's, it's a pretty well in situation. You guys are there. Murray Green Street, uh, and they're not experiencing that big uh, impact, uh, lot, largely due to uh, 2018. Macon, not a very big county. So this is not simply for those that you immediately think of as experiencing growth right now. Uh, and quite frankly, I don't think many of these implemented it to, uh, to delay growth. Uh, it was to capture some revenue from the growth that was coming, God stop whether they wanted it or not. One other question. Does the state give us a bite out of this or is this 100% county revenue? It's 100% county revenue. The only thing that uh, with this resolution, the way it's written up, it said we can either go back into the school debt service or a capital outlay. Uh, if it's going to be for construction, then it needs to be not in the school debt service. It should be in the capital outlay. Why? That, that would be my only thing. State law doesn't forget, does it allow that? This, as passed, was known as the Adequate Facility School Tax, so it was meant for that purpose. Well, that's what I'm saying. It would be in the school capital outlet instead of going into the school that service. Because there, there's a problem now between the wheel tax different stages of what's the end and what's $40. It's not split up. It all goes in together unless you come up with some, you know, have come up with some way of making sure that we have an accountability on what that money is generating by itself to distinguish it, to use it. Do you see where I'm coming from? I, I do, and I haven't talked to the trustee about it, but I don't see why there wouldn't be a reason to have a subcategory that this right. goes into. We're, we're doing that with the archive fee. Uh, it has its own category that simply, uh, uh, Lana and I talked and her reports specifically pull out that fee. So setting up an accounting sub-account number would be an easy process to do. And then this money is transmitted once every 30 days to your trustee. She knows where it's coming from, so allocating it to that under the, the proper accounting code is not. Mm -hmm. I agree with that. The $50 wheel tax is delayed. It's got two different line numbers, one for 40 one for 50. <coughs> Any other discussion? Okay. Thank you, Mr. Well, that item number, let's, no, we, I have to <coughs> have somebody make a motion to vote. I, mean, I, I, I have a motion to pass the resolution adopting the provisions of the. We have to put a number on it. 219. We have to put a number on this resolution. One nine. No, I'm talking about the section three. You have to put a ray on section three. Okay. 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 Okay.
members of the board, commission, it's a pleasure to be here with you this morning. Uh, I don't want to be remiss, so I want to tell you that I do have our quarterly report, and should have copy of that, any questions on that, uh, on the uh, quarterly report, so we want that to slip by, that uh, we have a quarterly report you know, on time, uh, to be punctual, and, uh, and we do it right. I uh, appreciate uh, the opportunity to talk to you today. A couple of issues in regard to, to this. Uh, we're looking at certainly the high school roof, and we invited you to come to see the high schools, uh, high school situation there on Thursday evening, and two of your, uh, of your group did uh, attend that, and uh, Corey and uh, Mr. Matthew both uh, attended, and I know we had some conflict over the chamber dinner, the same thing too, I had two invitations to go to the same thing just like today, get the inauguration instead of being with you, but that's all I chose to be with you this morning. Great. So. May I add something here? Go ahead, uh, I did not make it to Woodland or Woodbury to the high school. Had eight years on the um, school board. I know what they look like. So really, I didn't need to see them right in front. And so we can use, and, 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 and to uh, Randy, I understand, most all of you have been there and understand what we're dealing with. And that was just an opportunity to, to meet with the PTO. We have some members of that group here today, also members of the Woodland uh, PTO are here as well as concerned parents uh, are here and I, you know it's kind of it's kind of in fact very interesting today that where it's pouring down rain and I guarantee at each of those schools and not just those but others uh, there you know there are buckets in the floor I'm sure uh, Ms. Cossey made sure this morning she's here principal of Woodland and certainly Ms. Nichols made sure that those um, trash cans are right there soaking up that water and uh, we know that's an issue. I don't think most of you have read that uh, report again and again. You have the roof evaluation report that we've shared. With you. I think I've been sharing that for six months now, so it's somewhere, somewhere close to that. And so uh, I don't think we rehash the issue that roofs need to be repaired. Am I correct with that? That uh, we do. So we're asking, what we're asking the uh, board of uh, the Board of Education, we have uh, Mr. Travis Attorney, our Vice Chairman is here. I don't want to see any other board members uh, that are here with me, but they voted a couple months ago to, to recommend the KE type roof. And that's the middle grade roof. That's the, uh, the one that have got your modified, modified bitumen is the higher end, $2.25 million. High school roof one, uh, there at 1.8. And uh, Woodland, uh, you can see the cost of a wooden roof. You look at your report, you can see that. Uh, one thing I have for you, though, too, in the Woodland, the Woodland School would be uh, $619,000 for Woodland, thus what I asked for the 2.4. If you are considering a bond issue, I would certainly advise you to go ahead and do the Woodbury Grammar at, at $476,000. So if you're going to go for a bond issue, that means we would have the three most popular, meaning the three highest attended schools. Can I, can I interject you, something? Yeah, you could have that done if you desire to do that. I'm sorry. I appreciate that. This, I was going to make sure that item number 10 says approved transfer of two point from educational debt services with general purpose fund. Are we still on that topic or are we talking about borrowing money? I just, I just need to well, know. it's up to this body to determine which way you want to go on that. What is it that you're asking that the commission? I'm asking the commission to prepare these roofs. That's what I'm asking the commission to do. Well, we first have to address this first before we discuss right. some other money. Uh, right. Right. So if you don't address this, you would go to the, the Lord Lori Bernard's email. Is what I think we need to look at if you're going to do that. <laughs> so, uh, are you um, wanting to steal, though? Do you want educational debt service money into the general school fund? I, I want money any way we can get it to repair these roofs. But the question <laughs> is this question first. Before we have to get this off the table, Right. Move on to another. Okay. So, what is it that you're asking the commission? Are we to address this question first? Yes, I think that would be the one that you would address. Can we use the $2.4 million out of educational debt service for this project? Discussion. For this project. Yeah, discussion. Go ahead. We can't use $2.4 million. That's all we allocate to the state. Well, that's the question. Any other discussion? If, if I say we go ahead and make a motion. If, if you read closely, okay. I just want to say we can't 
can't, I mean, the 2.419 is, is literally already allocated for the debt that we incurred in 1999. So we can't use that, but we can use the $10 that doesn't have that uh, debt allocated for it. So we would have to put that on the bond, and that, that might be a different discussion, but I don't know that we, we, we just can't, we can't hold $2.4 million. Any other discussion? So I guess this this uh, this motion here, so this what I see is, is, is a, a non-issue, and then the next discussion is, or the next agenda item is, is a, a budget committee issue or a another meeting issue to vote for repair of roofs and the bond mode and, and we got a what? What, what about the roofs? We're, we're going to put it all, we're going to keep that rubble. But no, I, I'm not saying that. What about the roof of the woodland? Woodland, buddy. And it falls in while we're waiting until next month. So do we need to vote on the roof? I think we should. But I'm saying, I'm not trying to, I'm not uh, trying to, uh, what well, I'm trying to clarify right now, but we, well, I have a motion to move $2.4 million to, to the general school purpose fund from the education bit. So I have a motion to move. Mr. Chairman, if I can interject that. Now, 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 if you now, want to continue, so this issue here. On that issue, Lloyd Bernard's letter, I think, is pretty clear. You could use some of that. I think 50% was what I read in that that you could use on that, as long as you're making, continuing to make your payments toward that service. But I know you could use some of that, but not <laughs> At least that's what I read in Mr. Bernard's letter. But I'm, we're not in a position to do a, a, a bond negotiation motion right now that I don't see and then to make a contract over the roof. I mean, we'd have to do, we'd have to put that on the market. I'd have to talk to Mr. Bond and things in Mr. Bond fund. And there's some processes right. I can't remind you that, that, that this was not on. Right. The, Understand. So. That was not on the agenda. Right. And, that's, and that was kind of the clarity I wanted to make sure where we're at. Well, then the money ain't there. You go to take the account and pull out all the money that's been pulled out. They ain't two point four. There's not two point four million now. Okay. Any other any other discussion? <coughs> so, I have, so I don't have a motion to transfer this correct? Okay. Do you want to allow discussion concerning the rules? Because I can't make a decision on Barney and I, I think do. we do need to discuss this. We'll get we put it off and we'll put it off and we'll put it off. But we can't, but I'm trying to tell you we can discuss it all we want. We can't fix that problem here today. This is a this is a either a special call meeting or another opportunity. We got to sit down and, and and figure out what the what the roof cost is, how much money we're borrowing, and we got to make sure educational debt service can service that debt. So this, this is not the place to have this discussion. We had to have a discussion sometime or another. Now, now people sitting around this table, last right time we voted on this baseball we said we said roofs was the biggest. Thing that we need to think about. Well, is it still? You, you said it. Is it still big to you? It still is big to me. Well, let's this talk is about it then. Everybody voted no on trying to try and get some revenue. What are we going to do? How are you going to get it? Go out of return? Well, you've got it. You're the going same. to put it on the public. And you just get it all the way back. And get it out of the I agree with that. I, I'm okay with that. I mean, but, but I don't think they can keep down the road. I don't think it needs to be a month from now. I think no. we need to either have a special call meeting or we need to have some kind of budget committee meeting where we sit down with these guys and work that out. But I, 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 I think that's what we need to do. I think we need to have a special call meeting and we need to work that out. I think that's what we need to do. I he came to the budget committee and sent him back over. We keep kicking the ball back and forth, and we're not doing nothing. We'll, we'll, we'll kick the ball back and forth. The roof falls in on the youngest, and then we'll run out. What, 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 we I can't live here. Chairman, if I could. Okay. okay. Let's, let's keep it order. Let me, let me hear from you first. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I think your, your email from Lord Bernard said a lot. And that comes from the Comptroller's office state agency. In fact, my lady at the state won't even talk to me because the Treasury, the, the Comptroller's office is taking the lead on this issue. So my, my deal is what did, what did Lori Bernard's letter from the Tennessee Comptroller's office state? It stated 
that and, and regarding your, your debt analysis, which I think that was wonderfully done there during from CTAS, that showed us where we were in debt in the county. Now, that's y'all's department, not mine. But what she did say concerning the County County Board of Education is that we need to sit down, this body, the County Commission, and the County County Board of Education need to sit down and talk about a 10-year capital expenditure plan. Now, our school board, the County County Board of Education, Mr. Tony Vice Chairman is here if you have any questions. We are working currently on <coughs> our strategic plan. We've not done a strategic plan in many, many years. And we're looking at that with our vision, preparing your students, our students, our students for their future. That's my mission. My vision is to have excellence every single day, that we are engaged in excellence every single day. Well, if I'm, the, I'm asking our students and teachers to do that, I would certainly be remiss that our board and this commission is not doing that. So I'm asking you, uh, in fact, if I have to get down on one knee, I, I will do it. Let's do what Lori Bernard, the Tennessee Comptroller's Office, has asked us to do and sit down in a mandatory meeting. I don't know if you can do that, but I think I'd strongly word it that your attendance is needed unless you're on your deathbed or you're in the hospital that we sit down and we look at a 10-year capital expenditure plan. That's what I would strongly, and the strongest urgings I can do as the director of schools is ask you to follow what the Tennessee Comptroller asks us to do. Yes, I'll let the motion right now that we have the school board members come to the budget meeting on February 5th, and we've got 17 days to get in touch with whoever we need to get in touch with to determine whether or not we have we can do a bond issue or whatever. And we can sit down together and discuss it right then. And if it takes us three hours, four hours, whatever, to solve the problem with the roof, we can do it right then. Five seconds. Second. 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 Full commission. Full commission. Yes, yeah, not just a budget meeting. I'm talking. Right. Right. I did a special call. A special call. Okay. okay. Yeah, yeah. 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 yeah, I can. I can do Specifically yeah. for that yeah. stuff. Right. So, Thank you. Any other subject? Can we can we take all other subjects off the board? Yes, sir. 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 Board of Education to attend a special call meeting on February 5th with the sole subject to be determining how we're going to fix the rules on all the students <coughs> and to include all commissioners at 5.30 February 5th in the courthouse. Okay, you got that? Call the roll. Just roost, but a capital expenditure plan. I'll have all the stakeholders for at that meeting. Right. We can, we can work through the, the work of this. this property. That, that way, that was just not the roost, that we look at capital expenditures for the next 10 years. See, I mean, the, the only thing, uh, this is about the most decent thing I've seen in my business. instead of a need emotional reaction to something. I mean, if, if it was on here today that we were going to talk about a bond issue or whatever, the director would have done his work that he's only had to hear today. But it wasn't. It was wanting to transfer money. So it ain't keeping the can down the road. Well, we bought it on it anyway. We, that's yeah. about well, what I'm saying, though, even the discussion part, 
But anyway, we're going we're going in the right direction, no. Wiggins was talking. That's what we do. That's what I sit there and talk. And I do have some I do have some figures for you if you want. If I can make them understand, I like to pass these out. This kind of you're worrying about the student population, and we're looking at student enrollment. And I've got some graphs in here for you that might help you to kind of see where we've been and see where we're going. So if I have to do this, channel, I'll pass these out. And you can see those. I've also I've also looked at Willow's roof. And I did just to give you just a brief discussion. I don't want to blame. I don't want to blame point. But we have lost uh, because no insulation was put on the, the roof at the high school. We're working with Train and, and Donna. We're working with uh, Scott Slusher. Yes, he met right. with us. He met with us uh, the other uh, well, what was it Thursday? Thursday. Thursday. We met with we met with, uh, with him who is with the state of EESI, which is Efficient Energy Efficient School Initiative. And it's a state organization. We're going to look at that, too. Uh, I'm doing some stuff with that because it is readily neutral. You don't have to build any passes, increase anything. You just allow us to do it. And we, we do that. We do, those, we do that funding. Now, I want to give you a back one on Woodland. Since you're considering Woodland, I'm going to give you a little bit to look at on where I've zeroed in on Woodland's enrollment for the past 10 years as well. So let's give y'all some, some stuff to look at. And our board, uh, the Kansas Board of Education will be next, next Tuesday as we're beginning our budget review here at that point. So what I'm going to tell you is you can, you can give you yourself to look at the population, the populations, which are going to look at that as you do it, as we think about what we're going to do in the next few years. And I'm going to try to get some folks, but, but I, I want to put that on the radar too, Mr. Chairman, that, that the energy efficient, and, and, and uh, Mr. Bush met with us, uh, Brent met with us the other day, Mr. Scott, with Train, who I'm working and I with. I was just explaining the sidebar discussion was who they were, how the Department of Education, right. who, and who with, with, worked with Train to assess your energy needs throughout your school Correct. and to sense the fact the roofs are kind of an important part of energy needs because of insulation 